All right, guys, it is early in the morning. I got to the Keys five hours ago, roughly. And now we're waking up to go lobstering. Opening morning of mini season. It's a little windy. I have no idea what's going on. I wasn't here for scouting or anything like that. What's the plan, Christopher? Go with the stuff we can see early in the morning first, and then uh, we'll get some of the other holes that might have a few more lobster on it once we get enough daylight to see it. Where is that? Is that the shallow spot? That is the shallow spot. Okay. Nice little cruise out, a little choppy, but not too bad. Feeling more awake. It's good. But there's a big old frog right there. On the net. Oh uh, yeah. He jumped on me. And I mean it. He jumped on me. I got him. He's a cute little okay. frog. Big old boy. We usually start out with a couple people in the boat and a couple people in the water. Um, usually Chris and my dad get in first. And what we do is we work those ropes and the uh, and the trade out nets. And when they let go, y'all let me know. And then we'll kind of loop around back to them. Sometimes we'll bring the ropes in so they don't get tangled in the motors. <clears throat> um, and we'll throw them back out. Sometimes we'll actually help pull them in if they need it. And we'll just be switching out uh, nets just to make it a little more efficient. Okay, we're starting to find them. It's interesting how it works. Sometimes you think you go over your numbers, okay. and then finally you, they start catching them, and you look and you're over your numbers, but before they weren't catching them. But it made me a little nervous at first. It was real slow going, they didn't see any, but once we got in the area, it seemed to find them. Kind of funny how that works. The rope's still out. There ain't very many out here. Uh, yeah. How many we got? Uh, seven. I would say the uh, one big tip we need to discuss is when you're lobstering, um, don't get discouraged, kind of like fishing. Uh, I don't know if you heard it, Dad was in the water and he goes, uh, there ain't many here. Yeah, I heard it. And then we, we limit it out. The thing about lobstering is lobster like to hide in structure. Mm -hmm. And part of the reason they pick the structures they hide in is because they're well concealed. And so being just off maybe 10 feet sometimes could be the difference of going across a major piece of reef or coral that is packed full of lobster and then being over emptiness. This particular spot where we're at, there's a lot of structure everywhere and there's so much structure for this lobster that there'll be patches where it's just totally empty or nothing but shorts and then 10, 20 feet over and you just have to swim a little bit and then you'll see it packed. And that's kind of what happened in this particular instance. From a boat driver's perspective, I mean, it looked like I hit the numbers. I mean, the GPS is still only so accurate. And, you know, you've got divers behind you, so there's a little lag. You know, I'll hit them several times, but then I just came over at the right angle and got slightly off, and they saw them, and they caught lobster. I think Dad's off. Dad's off. You want the right shot? No, you're good. We marked through the jug out, marked them. They really didn't stay in that area. They just kind of moved, drifted with the current. So I'm gonna take them back to the, to the marking and see if there's anything there. If not, we're gonna move. See, we hadn't quite hit this area, so that's good that they're letting off. It's right there. A big tip, uh, I don't think we really talked about a lot before is having a marker jug ready. Working around the bridges and stuff, sometimes it is just a single hole and you just drop off, you get your lobster and you're done. But the ones that really speed it up, the reason we can sometimes get a limit in 45 minutes or an hour is every now and then you will find a nice piece of structure or undercut or something that will have your whole team's worth of lobster in there. And so 
that marker jug makes it really easy because if the people on the boat can throw this buoy, you don't have to spend time looking for it, especially if the current's really bad. When you're in the water, you know, all the bottom gets looking alike. And when you're in the boat, you know, GPS is only so accurate and um, it's so much easier just to have a marker jug, throw it in the water, and then both you and the, the divers can look and say, okay, that's the spot. Let me get them over to that spot. It, it's just way easier than trying to use your GPS unit. And to have a good marker jug, especially in these good currents, the store-bought ones just don't cut it. You need a heavy weight on there. We put like a five pound window weight. So, you know, when we throw that out, it's gonna stay on its spot. Don't knock out your divers. Yeah, if you're in the water, and like for me, if I come, come up and I see a spot that requires a marker, I like to try and mm -hmm. signal them without yelling out to everybody in the Florida Keys that I'm on a good spot. So come up here and steal our numbers. So I like to try and signal something, wave my tickle stick. Alert, you can come up with any sort of symbol you want and your boat captain will probably laugh at you for whatever subtle reason it is. <laughs> but when I do have this spot, I try and stay right on it. And when they throw the marker out, if mm -hmm. possible, I try and make sure the actual sinker lands right in the spot mm -hmm. so that you know you're going exactly where you need to. Um, also have those marker jugs ready. I don't mean like, oh yeah, I got one in my boat, it's in my bento, let me go grab it. I mean, I got it out on the deck. When they need it, I just pick it up and chunk it. Anyone can pick it up and chunk it that fast. But one other thing, if you are in the water when a marker has been thrown out, you have to make sure you're conscious of where this marker is and particularly the marker line. Because mm -hmm. if you're not careful about that and you get your fins tangled up in it, you could drag the marker off the hole. So when it is thrown in, make sure when you come up to it and you're fighting these lobster that you know where the line is, that you can get out of the way if, you have, if the current's blasting you back or maybe pull the marker just slightly off to the side so that when you are working it, you're not worried about getting snagged up in it. It's uh, pretty windy today. It's, it's been uh, windy so far down here in the Keys, but uh, we'll be able to make do. We'll show you how you can uh, work through it and uh, go from there. Sorry. How long do y'all want to give it here? Uh, what, 15, 20, I don't know if we're catching them, we'll stay, but if not, I'd say 15, 20 minutes. Take a look below you. Should be right there. He's out walking. He was just walking into the hole. The other thing that's really helpful is uh, having nets. We like to be able to trade out nets, and particularly we like our nets with a decent enough tail where when we scoop up the lobster, we can kind of flip the net over so he can't swim out. And the type of net you use is a personal preference a lot of times mm -hmm. too. You like the longer nets because, yeah, you can do that flip. Mm -hmm. um, there's been a times where you catch one lobster and another one, a bigger one, like decides to sneak its way out and you need to get that one too. So I actually like a little bit shorter tail so that mm -hmm. if needed, I can reach in and grab the one in my net and kind of hold that lobster in a tickle stick in one hand and I can still get to the other one. I've seen people, they scoop you know, the lobsters in the net, then they just try to go straight up with it. And the lobster will actually swim up out of your net before you get to the surface. Yeah, and that never so works well. You need the... <laughs> It, it, it doesn't work very often for any not lobster worth catching. A good consistent practice. Right. But what's, um, what's really simple though is if you put the net right on top, rather than even having to lift it up, and mm -hmm. you know, as long as you can hold your breath, you're good. You just set it there, you take your tickle stick along the back of it, and you just rake it forward. Yeah. And that pinches them in too, and then you can swim up and you're good to go. That's actually what I do most of the time. And then the other thing is just to have plenty of nets on the boat. Mm -hmm. So if you are like, tagging in and out with the boat every time you take one up to the boat. You don't have to wait for them to empty your net and throw it back to you. You can just hand them that net, they mm -hmm. can throw you the next one. They can double check your measurements. It's a practice we always do. We measure yeah. it in water. We let our boat guys re-measure it again just in case. Mm -hmm. And uh, you can just keep going.
Uh, yeah, a few more boats are arriving. Say the current wasn't too bad, or yeah. is it slack now? Or I don't know if it's dead slack. But it's it's slowing up enough that I can do it. Do we need to go to the cut or something now, or are we going up by the bridge? Or I, you think most of all these were bigger this morning? Yeah. Seem like um, kind of right here uh -huh. is where we were doing good yesterday. I mean, you might could go a little here, but there are some boats there. I got thunder all. You know, pull that rope in. Bag. You see any issues? Yeah. Maybe we're running more smoother in many seasons than we have. Well, I talked about more of them because of COVID. I didn't really see a difference. All the same this year. Yeah. Well, thanks for watching the video. We hope you guys learned a new thing or two about catching lobster, make it a little stress free and a little more fun for you. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you have any questions, send them our way. And we'll see you next time. Yeah. See you later.